Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, okay, all of us shout it out. Ready, go. For indeed he was sick, nigh unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Amen. Amen. If anything had happened again, around this time in which we find ourselves, can you imagine the impact on our faith? If anything had happened to Dikinata, it's not Florence, Paul, Chianju, and the rest. I don't know what I would do. I don't know about you. I don't know what you would do. So God had mercy on him. Amen. Not him alone, but me also. Amen. Come and put your hands together for the Lord. I, I, I personally believe that on that particular day, God, God, God looked at me and, and had mercy on me. Amen. He had mercy on me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. On this note, I want to just give thanks to God. Amen. Please put this inside for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we have given thanks unto you. Continue to have this mercy on me and protect everybody here. Those present today, those who are not present today. Lord, let this mercy extend to all of them. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In their going out and they are coming in. Amen. Lord, let this mercy cover them. We lift up our hands unto you in gratitude. And we say, in your mercies, whether it be road, whether it be by air, or even domestic, Lord, spare all of us. Amen. Spare our children. Amen. Spare our families. Amen. And preserve your people. Thank you once again for sparing all of us from sorrow. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, if you believe and you are happy, thank God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's remain standing for the reading of the word of God. We shall read from Hebrews chapter number four. Hebrews chapter number four. And then we take it from verse 14 to 16. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. 
Let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, we stand in the mercies that we have received and we pray this morning, petition your throne through Christ Jesus that there will be grace abundantly upon your people. The type that brings help in time of need, such as we are in, such as the whole world find themselves. Release that grace upon this whole house in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for answered prayer. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts, breathe upon the word of God, and let there be inspiration in the hearts of your people and in their minds. Let there be understanding that brings favor. Take all the glory when all is said and done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated. The title of the message is Grace is the Place to Be, Part 2. Grace is the Place to Be, Part 2. So there is an invitation for us to come to the throne of God this morning. The throne of God this morning and we are here we are here and the Bible says the mercy that we have received we shall find grace to help in time of need we are in the greatest times of need and I couldn't have spoken on any subject more than grace I said it last week. I'll say it again this week before I pray, I preach. That any time the word of God is preached, before you come again to hear the word of God, try as much as possible to listen to the previous message. Because it will help you be in the flow and have good understanding. Amen. Grace is a domain. I said it last week. Grace is a domain where instead of the rule of of law, the Christian is ruled by grace. Grace is a domain where instead of the rule of law, the Christian is ruled by grace. If you had listened again to the last week's message, this wouldn't be a surprise to you. I am not trying to define what grace is. I know the popular definition of grace is unmerited favor. I said it last week, that is not wrong. But I'm trying that, to tell you that Grace is far, far bigger than just unmerited favor. The reason why I said grace is a domain is because in Galatians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul the apostle said, Ye are soon removed from him that called you into his grace. 
He says, I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into, into church. Shout it out. Into, into the grace of Christ. So you are called into. Amen. We are called into. In the Old Testament, Israel was delivered from slavery in Egypt with a promise of a place of rest. When they were delivered from Egypt, they were given a promise of, a, of rest. And the re rest was supposed to take place in the land of Canaan. In the New Testament, the Christian is delivered from the kingdom of darkness and is translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Shall we read it? Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Again, all of us. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So the Christian is delivered from the power of darkness and he is transported. He's transported from one domain into another domain called the king's kingdom or the king's domain. Kingdom means the king's domain. The king's domain. The king's domain, where the king lives and rules. So if the believer is, 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 is called or delivered from the kingdom of darkness or the power of darkness, that's the devil's kingdom, he's not left there anymore. He's transported, he's carried away into another domain called the king's domain. The king that called you, according to Paul in Galatians chapter 1, the same king called you into what we call called into what we call the grace of Christ. Called into Shout it out. Called into grace of into grace. So, what is the difference between the kingdom of God and the and and and, and you know grace? It's a domain. It's what? A domain. So, in the kingdom of His dear Son, grace rules, and not the law of Moses. In the kingdom of his dear son, where you are being transported into, the Bible is saying that there it is grace that rules. Amen. And that is why I said that it is the best place to be. Amen. <laughs> I repeat, it's the best place to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ye are called into 
his grace. You are called into it. <laughs> you are called into it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Where you are seated now, you have nothing to do with the law of Moses, but rather grace. It's a better place to say amen. Amen. Just like Israel was called from the kingdom, let me say that again. Just as Israel was called, uh, delivered from slavery in Egypt, and they were promised a place of rest in Canaan, The domain of grace is also a place of rest. Amen. <laughs> the domain of grace is also a place of rest. Amen. Why? Because under grace, God does not require of the Christian to do something. Listen to me and watch my mouth. God does not require of the Christian to do something before she benefits or he benefits from the provisions of the finished work of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Think about it. In the domain of grace, which is a place of rest for all believers, God does not require of you to do something in order to benefit from the provisions of the finished work of Christ Jesus. What do I mean? Healing. Healing. Healing is one of the finished works of Christ Jesus on the cross. Amen. Amen. Question is this. Does God require of you, apart from faith, to do something in order to get healed? No. Mm -hmm. Apart from faith, does God require of you to do something in order to be healed? Yeah. I know somebody will tell you that if you had fasted 40 days, if it's your 40 days fast that will make God heal you, then the healing is no longer by grace. Listen carefully. It is no longer by grace. You end it. It's your personal effort that brought the healing. Therefore, anybody who wants healing can follow your footsteps and also end healing. What about maybe our Muslim brothers who came to the crusade knew nothing he knew nothing about fasting, about <laughs> 21 days all night. And just listen to the man of God and you're supposed to pray for people who are sick. And that was the first encounter with the Lord. And she received her healing. And the Christians who were there who have been fasting for 40 days never received their healings. 
when, when this ministry started, we used to meet just about 100 meters away. Pardon me. Just about 100 meters away. One day, a lady Muslim, and I know most of you know the story, I just don't want to call names, came to one of her meetings. She, in fact, she lived right by. She had had some tummy problem over the years. And when she came to that meeting, it was a weekday meeting. Those were the days that we were running Goshen. I, 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 was, I started running Goshen. And we had a place where I asked people to just go and lie down and pray, if you remember the story. And she also came there, lied there and prayed. <laughs> and she got well. Amen. She got healed. Amen. I don't want to go further because then I will have to mention it to rem remind some of you. If she was required to do something, or we are required to do something, what did she do? When she got here, she went and called her friend. For that one, I can mention the name, Rukia. And I think Pastor Francis should know these people. Anybody else remember who we are talking about? Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. She also came and got healed. <clears throat> Are you here? If God had a requirement for healing, question that these are people of different faith, they did nothing, yet they got healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Rukia went and brought Sophia. <laughs> In that trail. And Sophia went and brought another lady. Remember her? She was studying. I think her master's program, when you had to go in there, remember? Yeah. And these were all people who had different faith from ours. So, the finished work of Christ, which is healing, comes to us not because we did something to, 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 to meet a demand. No. All you need to do is to believe. Amen. Believe in the finished work of Christ and in the person of Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has to require us to do something before he blesses us, then the blessing is conditional, like the Old Testament. Then we are going back to the days of the law. And if you shall observe to do according to all that is written in this law, then this blessing shall come upon you. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Please, can you be quick about this for me? 
Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. Oh, church. To do all his commandments. To do all his commandments. To do some. Oh. To do some. Oh. But what? Oh. All the commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee. So you see, you have to be able to observe all, to do. It's a requirement. It's a requirement. Then God will be able to bless you in the city, heal you, and, and do all kinds of things to you. I'm saying under grace, Instead of a requirement to do, grace only asks you to believe in the finished work of Christ Jesus and in the person through whom grace came. Amen. So it is no longer of performance. It's no longer performance. The Kinata was saved from death. He's here. Maybe you can tell me what he did. What personally he did to save himself from death. Yes. <laughs> he said he will give his angels charge Amen. over you. Amen. So you do not dash your food. He's talking about accident. Can he tell me or tell this church what he did? He tried the foot break. It failed. And he tried the hand break. And it failed. He hit one car, hit two. Went into the ditch. Lose his seatbelt, realized that he was alive. Check the other second, third person, they were alive. What did he do to get that provision of deliverance? It is by grace. So the Bible says that if it is by grace, then it is no longer of it is no longer of works. And I love to read the International Standard Version of this uh, uh, verse to you. Can we all read it? Ready, go. Let us read it. Ready, go. And if by grace then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Again. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Listen to this. But if this is by grace, then it is no longer on the basis of action. Otherwise, grace will no longer be grace. Let me read that again. This is the International Standard Version. But if this is by grace, if what Dikin Atta went through is by grace, then it is no longer on the basis of of his experience and ability to maneuver the car. Are you following? Yeah. If he admits that his deliverance from that motor accident last week was by grace, then what the Bible is saying that then it is no longer by 
his actions, his ability to maneuver the vehicle. Otherwise, if it is by the, his ability to maneuver the vehicle, then grace will no longer be grace. Amen. Hallelujah. So the domain, of, the domain of grace is also a place of rest because under grace, God does not require the Christian to do something. To do something. Only the Old Testament. You do this and observe this and obey all the commandments, then all these blessings shall come upon you. The blessing of healing. The blessing of being saved from accident. You have to do all this before they come upon you. I'm saying that under grace, you do nothing. I say you do nothing. The only thing you do is to believe in Christ Jesus and the finished work. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. First Corinthians 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I but the grace of God, which was with me. Amen. Oh, 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 sorry. Sorry for that. I gave you a wrong scripture. We'll come to that later. Now, let me say this. When we talk about rest from performance, it doesn't mean that inactivity. God help me explain this. When you're talking about the rest of God, it doesn't mean that tomorrow don't go to work because God is going to, <laughs> God is going to prosper you. Hello, church. Tap somebody and say, listen, listen to pastor. When we say rest from performance, it doesn't mean that God's blessing, finished work of his prosperity, whatever, healing and so forth. Because it is there and it doesn't require you to do something. So tomorrow you don't go to work. You just stay in the house before it gets out of hand and you go and misquote me. Tomorrow morning, in fact, you must be the first person to be on your way to the office. There's a difference between the finished work of Christ Jesus. That's what we are talking about. It's different from you going to your secular world to work, go to the market and sell and all those things. Please. If you stay back from going to the market tomorrow and you go hungry, don't go and quote me and say, my pastor said we should rest and that God has not required of me to do something in order to be prospered. Hmm. Can I get witnesses here that I've said this clear and clear? Amen. Amen. Then I also, I don't have to come and stand here and preach to you. I'm doing an activity now, right? Yes. But I'm doing this activity in rest. 
knowing that the prosperity of this church does not depend on me. And I don't have to worry about that. Amen. I don't have to be anxious about that. Amen. I don't have to go and see some malam and do something so that this church can have numbers. I don't have to do that. If I have to do that, then I am in work. Yeah. I am what? Work. I am in work. But I just have to believe that God has already blessed you people. Amen. And when you will get blessed, you will bless this house. Amen. And other people will see your blessings and follow you to church. Amen. Hallelujah. So the rest we are talking about is rest from anxiety. Amen. Where, where you have to be worried to do something. We pray for healing. And tomorrow you didn't see the healing. And then you hear another pastor say that we are in a fast for 120 days. And by the time we are done, healing will just flow. From the throne of God. And you live here. Go and undertake 120 days fast. I'm saying that it doesn't take 120 days fasting. For God's provision of healing to flow to you. You didn't hear me. It doesn't take 120 days of fast for God's provision. If you have to fast 120 days for God's, God to heal you. Then it is your own personal effort. It's not by grace. Yeah. Healing comes by grace. Amen. Grace is, is what it is. Because you don't have to. Meet any demand. The law requires you to meet a demand. All grace requires of you is to have faith in the one who finished the job. Amen. Have faith in him. Amen. Have faith in him. Amen. Therefore, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, it says, wherefore, labor to enter into his rest. Everybody say, labor. labor. Of course, it sounds like contradiction. He who is entered into his rest ceases from all works, isn't it? Yeah. In other words, you don't do any work. Then the next verse says that, labor to enter into his rest. It looks like it's a contradiction. No, there's no contradictions over there. Labor to enter into the rest means that work at your faith. If there is, and I've said it before. If there is anything that hinders the Christian, it is our unbelief. And if there is any work, if there is any fight, it's a fight of faith. Amen. If there is any struggle, it's a struggle against unbelief. So you work at your faith so that your faith in Christ will not wane. Your faith in his finished work will not wane. Amen. Every day you have to work on that. So the Bible says, uses the word labor, labor, labor. Work on your faith. That is the only work. That is the only work, I repeat. And that is why you cannot joke with listening to the word of God over and over and over and over again. I told you some time ago, I listen to me. I listen to me. And when I listen to me, I got blessed. Repeatedly. Repeatedly. Sometimes the mistake you make is that you think that by sitting there and listening to me, you have understood everything. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. The hearing is not one. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. You have to keep hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And if you go through that process, it will surprise you that by the seventh time when you are listening to the message, there's something new Amen. that you didn't hear or you didn't learn of when you listen to, to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. 
Hallelujah. And when you have to do the hearing and hearing and hearing, you know what you are doing? You are laboring to preserve your faith. If it is once, but if you have to do it about seven, ten times, those in my house, they see me. <laughs> One message over and over and over and over and over. Somebody will say, what, 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 what is he looking for? There's a time that the breath of God comes upon his word. I'm talking about inspiration. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Maybe the ten times some inspiration will come upon God's word. That is different from, you know, that will give you a different understanding. The Bible calls it good understanding. The Bible says good understanding gives favor. Amen. Good understanding gives favor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So rest doesn't mean don't do any work. The rest we are talking about has to do or pertains to the finished work and all the provisions of the finished work of Christ Jesus. Can I get your amen if you really understand amen. that? Amen. Amen. In John 17, verse 4, Jesus said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Can we all read it? Ready? Go. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Read it loudest. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. Amen. Loudest of all. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou givest me to do. Amen. 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 I have Finish the work which thou gavest me to do. We are talking about the finished work. The market sales is not finished, so tomorrow we have to go. You didn't hear me. Dr. Ado, the work in the consulting room has not finished. If I ask speaking that some people are falling sick and they will need you tomorrow. So please, don't say that we have been called into rest because of grace. Therefore, I will not go to work. That work is not finished. <laughs> the reason why I can't stop preaching is that some of you, we have to work on your faith. So I cannot stop preaching. I have to work the work of preaching. Hello? But when it comes to the finished work, we are talking about the finished work. He died at the... In fact, the last moment when, when he asked for water and they gave him vinegar and he drank, then he took a de de deep breath and said, it is finished. It is what? Finished. That's the last time. Isn't it? Isn't it? Who, who knows that song? That last time we yeah. Can you help me? Can we sing that song? Thank you. Do, do, do you. do you 
do you realize the difference between the finished work that we are talking about? We are Agbena. Inke Agbena. But the work in your office, Agbekona. Hello? Agbekona. Your war over Anuchumo. You will go to work tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But when it comes to the finished work, it is finished. There is nothing you can add to it. There is nothing I can add to it. All we have to do is to open our arms and receive it by faith. Amen. Provision from accident, you can do nothing. You open your heart by faith and receive God's provision from free from what? Accident. Healing. Amen. Free. How, how, how was he going to fast on the road to Kumasi and the accident happened? What time does he have to fast? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This message on grace, if you don't behave like some wasi student, hmm, third year or whatever, and learn, you're going to struggle for a very long time in your Christian life. Listen to me. Amen. Amen. So in the domain of grace, every step of the Christian is enabled, endowed, and influenced by the spirit of grace. Write that somewhere. In the domain of grace, every step of the believer or the Christian is enabled, endowed, and influenced by the spirit of grace. Paul says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly. Shall we read that? Ready, go. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Second time, loudest. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Amen. Let me read the International Southern Version, ISV. Listen carefully. But by God's grace... I am what I am. I am what I am by God's grace. And his grace shown to me was not wasted. Instead, I worked harder than all others. Not I, of course, but God's grace that was in me. I said that in the domain of grace, every believer or Christian is um, enabled and uh, endowed and influenced 
by the spirit of grace. Now, let's analyze that statement. Paul says, I am what I am. By by Paul was an apostle. Repeat after me. Paul was an apostle. Paul was an apostle. Again. Paul was an apostle. How did he become an apostle? He had the endowment from who? God. So it was by so he said, I am what I am by grace. grace. He was endowed an apostle by what? Grace. grace. Now, standing in that grace of an apostle, he said he worked harder than all the other apostles. Enablement. Enablement. There are minstrels some have broken through to international levels. Others are still around the local level. What makes you get there whilst all the others are still at local level is the grace of God. It is what? The grace of God. So he said, I labor more than, I work harder as an apostle. Where did he get the strength from? God. And he said that that strength is not just I. That strength that I have to work harder than all other apostles is by the grace of God. So I'm saying that when you, are, you get called into God, Grace, the domain of grace. Your life from that time onwards is about the spirit of grace enabling you, endowing you, and influencing you. Amen. You do what you do because of the grace of God. Yeah. You didn't hear me. You do what you do best because of the grace of God. I'm doing what I'm doing best because of the grace of God. Amen. I didn't have to meet any demand to be the teacher of the Bible. I didn't. God didn't ask me to do A, B, C, D. And then when I did it, I became a teacher. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't require anything of me. And I keep telling if you ask me how did you become a teacher, I don't know. I read the Bible, I study the Bible, I ask questions. That's all I do. And I told you sometimes I hear the Holy Ghost speak to me, even words to use. Words to use. That's all. And those encounters with the Spirit of God is all by the grace of God. Amen. It is by what? The grace of God. Listen, we have to study grace. Because we've been called into it. Amen. If you don't take any liking for this subject, then I don't know what else you would like in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Because we've been called into the thing. I don't want to struggle anymore. I don't want to use my own self whatever anymore. If there's something called grace, I'd rather go and follow that. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. yeah. 63 years, still struggling. No, 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 no. I won't do that anymore. Those of you who want to still struggle because you are younger, go ahead and struggle. And do your performance and so forth and so forth. 120 days. <laughs> 120 days of fasting. Uh -huh. 
Me. Me. <laughs> Abrantia yes, Spencer. 120 days fast. Lie, lie. I said what? Lie, lie. What, what is it? What do I want? But that is not to belittle those who do it. Maybe God has called them to do it. And I, I, can, I cannot, you know, belittle that. No. Ah. He has finished the work already. He has finished. Sometimes when some of these revelations come, the last time I asked God, oh, so all this from 1974 when I got born again, why is it that you didn't show me some of these things? It feels like wasted years. Now, I'm being honest with you. I got born again in 1974. Some of you, your parents didn't marry your father yet. Or your father didn't marry your mother yet. 74. So I said, why is it that you didn't show me this thing at that tender age? One day I was fasting for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I fasted. I fasted. I fasted. From secondary school, I jumped, I scaled the school wall. In fact, the bathroom is just before the school wall. And one of the uh, staff in the school, we call him Mr. Frimpong, uh, had a sugarcane farm behind. Some of the uh, students sometimes, when they get hungry, they jump and they go and cut the sugarcane and all that. One day they caught one young man with a sugarcane, about seven sticks. And they brought him to assembly hall. <laughs> you know how students <laughs> and they started singing. <laughs> Asa, oh Asa, oh Asa, sugar cane frewo. Amen. So one day I fasted. I prayed. It never happened. So every weekend, I'll scale the wall and go and hide in the sugarcane farm. And then there was a cassava farm. Fasting, praying, fasting. God baptize me. God baptize me. It never happened. And when I got tired and I'll no longer fast, one night, one night, we went out to have what we call dumb brokers. And I was standing in front of the former uh, finance minister, Kusi Bochwe, his residence. And I finished preaching. And when I finished preaching, I said the following. I believe you are awake and you listen to the message I preach. I want to pray with you. And at this time, then when I say at this time, I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the next word that came, Rabato Shada Rabada, Zeze Brekete, Brakato Tata Rabada. And I held my mouth. Because I knew scripture very well that whatever I was saying, they will not hear. I'll be confusing them. 
When I say fire, in the name of the next word that came were in tongues. He realized that when I was working in fasting and prayer to receive, I never, and it was not once. And this was well after school. This is well, 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 years after school. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. In grace, God supplies all our needs. In grace, God supplies all our needs. And we receive them by faith. We receive them by faith. We receive them by faith. So when I was fasting, the baptism never came. And this is about three years later. I thought that God has done something wrong and God doesn't want to baptize me. So I, I, I took to the doctrine that gifts are for some people. Tongue speaking are for some people. At a point in time, that was my stand. And at the time that I didn't least expect it or expect, God released the baptism upon my life. Amen. Listen, there are some things we are still doing today. It's all about works. And very soon we'll get tired. It's about time we understood the message of grace and walk or stand in that grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us, as people called into grace, Wake up thinking about grace, talking grace, walking in grace. We've been called into it, <laughs> we've been called into it. Amen. Wake up. Thinking grace, talking grace, walking in grace. Amen. I've advised myself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the domain of grace, we are not allowed to be influenced by the rule of Moses' law, but rather grace. We are not allowed to be influenced by the rule of Moses' law, but rather grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are because, the word for there also means because. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. What it means that those who walk under the grace can have sin to dominate their lives. One of the days I'll be talking about shall we sin or continue to live in sin because grace is available. The Bible says those who rather walk under the law, they have sin dominating them. But those who see 
Wake up in grace. Walk in grace. Talk grace. Sin does not have dominion over them. It looks like contradiction. People believe that. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. If you have a child in the house, you say, don't touch the stove. Don't switch on this. Don't, don't, don't open this. The day you are not in the house, curiosity killed the cat. That child will ask himself, why is it that daddy keeps on telling me, don't do this, don't do this. He wants to see the, the result of opening or, or, or touching that thing. Are you with me? Walk under grace and sin will not have dominion over you. This is the word of God. So here, I hardly talk about people sinning, blah, blah, blah. blah. When was the last time you heard me about that? When was the last time you heard me? No, we don't, it doesn't talk about sin. It doesn't talk about sin. Walk in grace. And sin will not have dominion over you. Amen. You know why? Grace has delivered unto you God's justification. Amen. Again, if you are a hard student, I've said some of these things already. Amen. You don't have to be influenced by the law because the law leads Christians or believers again into bondage. Something that they have been delivered from. We have been delivered from bondage. And we want to go back and leave the law. It's like taking you back into bondage. Hallelujah. Praise the, Lord. the law leads believers again into bondage. Something that they have been delivered from. In Galatians chapter 1, pardon me, chapter 5 verse 1, the Bible says that stand fast. Listen to Paul. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage. <laughs> One day, a certain man of God met. He said, "It called me. Say, Rev." God is telling me that uh, he's giving you a message and it's a message that you should preach and you should preach holiness. God didn't tell me. See, the message that God has given you to preach is the message of holiness. I just listened quietly. I said, thank you. <laughs> As he is, is God, is Jesus holy? Yes. You are holy. Amen. What do you understand by justification? Just as though you had never seen. That is not to say that I will not talk about holiness. We guide you to be who he is. And if you succeed in being that, 
I don't need to every night. Then when I come to church, the message God has given me is holiness, 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 holiness. holiness, holiness. Respectfully, I thanked him. Hallelujah. Stand therefore in the liberty. Grace is a domain of liberty. Can I hear you shout that? Grace is a domain of liberty. Grace is a domain of liberty. Therefore, I will walk in that liberty. Therefore, I will walk in that liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The law is bondage because James chapter 2 verse 10. James chapter 2 verse 10 and 11. For whosoever shall keep the law or the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet of neighbors, whatever. You've kept all. But the day you break one, for instance, <laughs> Jesus says that if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery with the person. You have never stolen anybody's property. You have never done anything. But the day you break one, you have broken all. You have broken what? All. You have broken what? All. Even though you only committed fornications, not adultery, you haven't killed. But you are, you are not different. You are, the same, you, you, you are a fornicator. At the same time, you are a killer. You are a murderer. At the same time, you are... Name them. You've committed all. Who can meet such demand? Who? Lift up your hands. Listen. You and I, we don't know better than Jesus Christ through whom grace and truth came into this world. We don't know better than him. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Anybody who can meet this demand? So, when I said the law leads to bondage, Paul said that we have been delivered from it. We are not under it. Thank God in this church we don't preach the law. Amen. You didn't hear me. I know some of you are sitting down there arguing in your heart. You can go on. But <laughs> I'm preaching what the Spirit of God has revealed to me. Amen. I'm not the first to preach it. The law condemns. The law condemns. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 19. For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more that the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. I don't have time. We have to go back and begin, begin from somewhere and then you get this better. But the preaching of the law, the Bible says that it brings what? condemnation. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. I don't see why I should go back and preach the law that brings condemnation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
The Bible has already said in Galatians 1, 5, 1, that we should stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast. Amen. Stand fast. Amen. I believe in grace. I'm standing fast in grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. Amen. Most of us Christians are mixed up in our practice as Christians. We are mixed up. We practice both the law and grace. We practice both the law and grace. Let me read this last scripture for today. Acts chapter 11, no, 15. And if it's not too much of you, I'll ask you to stand on your feet. Are we there? Let me just make it simple. Are you listening? Paul formally saw had gone to Antioch and some other places to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. People who are not originally Jews. And then some elders from the church in Jerusalem, the early church, came to visit them. And when they came to visit Paul and Barnabas, they began to look at the liberty in which they live and told Paul and Barnabas that they need to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. Are you here? Yes. Are you here? Yes. And it became a kind of argument. So they decided that, look, we, Paul and Barnabas, God has given us the gospel of grace. And we are not going back to put these people through the rudiments of the law of Moses. So you know what? If you come and this is what you are bringing, let's go back to, the, to Jerusalem, the headquarters. Whoever sent you, we are ready to meet the person. So let's all go and meet the people in, in, in the headquarters. <laughs> are you here? Okay. Oh, I said Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Is that verse 1? Okay. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. The manner of Moses simply means the laws of Moses. Moses. These people were Gentiles, so they've been born again saved. And they came back and said that unless you, you know circumcision, the Lord demands that for you to be part of God's decision, your foreskin must be what? Removed. And these people came and said, unless you, 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 some of them were even talking in tongues, unless they circumcise them, they are not saved. Verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension, disagreement, and disputation with them, they determined that Paul determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. 
What question? The question of circumcision. The law of Moses. They say, if you don't agree with me, ask. Let's all go to Jerusalem and ask Peter and James, the senior apostles. So let's go. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix, Samaria, declaring conversion, blah, 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 blah. Let me see whether we can jump some of them. Okay, we can. Let's, let's go. Four. Four. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Five. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Take note. The Pharisees were the adherents of the law. In fact, before Jesus, they were revivalists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were respected. They brought back the reading of the law. They were revivalists. But you see, you can be sincerely wrong too. You know that? Yeah. So some of them believe saying that there was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep church Have you seen that? Six. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. I'm trying to help you, those of you who are mixed up. Why did they come to the stage and the, and the, and the women are wearing trousers? Moses said that women should not wear men's attire. Somebody came to this chair before. Very happy. But one day, the singers mount the stage and they were in jeans. I, I can't remember specifically. You see. And the person got offended and left. Mm, yeah. Because Moses said so. Doctor, why are you in men's attire? Hmm? Why? Why? You are sucking the people. You are sucking the people. You are driving them away. Are you here? Yeah. I don't know how you consider this. This one looks like women's attire. Isn't it? It looks like women's attire. It looks like uh, uh, hmm? frolic. You know frolic? Women's frolic. Eh? Ashanti man will say fro frolic. Let's, let's get back. Verse 7. And when there had been much argument, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth, Peter, my mouth, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. The word of the gospel, not the law. And God, which know where the house, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. God loved them. Doctor, in fact, God loves you. You are wearing a man's address, attire, but God loves you. Hmm? Just like those who are wearing skirts, women's dress, God loves them as well. <clears throat> those of us with our long mouth, we don't even know the scripture condemning people. The, the, the person, but the day he said, no, no, no. I'm checking out of this church. And put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Amen. Did you hear that? 
How did God purify them? By not wearing men's attire? No, by faith. So doctor comes to stand the stage. You are sitting in the con- con- congregation condemning her. But she's a woman of faith and God is reaching out to her. And you don't understand why this girl should come on the stage with men's attire, breaking the law of Moses. And yet God is blessing her. You do, and God healed her. And you with all the, 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 the women's attire, God didn't heal you. You don't understand. You are mixed up. Lord have mercy on you. Amen. Let's go. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke? To put a yoke. What, what is he referring to as a yoke? Bondage. The law of Moses. It's a yoke. Say, I refuse that yoke. I refuse that yoke. I break myself from that yoke. I break Amen. Amen. He says, hey, yo, you are trying to take the people back into bondage. Let's stop that. In fact, I want you to read the whole chapter for the sake of time. We can't continue. But suffice it to say, from this point, you know that the elders in the church in Jerusalem, disagree with these people that they should go back and circumcise them and let them practice the law in addition to the liberty they have in the gospel. We disagree. Let them be free from the yoke. Are you here? Let them be free. And when you go on and read on and on and on, you see Peter's argument. And then James, who was the head pastor of the church in Jerusalem, also spoke and said that it is not proper for us to ask them to go back and practice the law. Amen. Amen. If you are for grace, be for grace. Amen. If you are for grace, be for grace. If you are for grace, be for grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. But please go back and read everything over there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you also read Galatians 3 from verse 10 to the end. Galatians 3, reading from verse 10. The law is bondage. I have no problem if you come to church and you tie your hair. It's beautiful. It is, it's beautiful. Amen. If somebody also come to church and doesn't tie their hair, it's no problem. Is there a problem? No. Hallelujah. Amen. We have been called into liberty. Grace is liberty. Let's therefore stand in that liberty. Take the message of grace like the, your bosom friend and seek to know more about grace and let us walk in it it will change our story 
I say to change our story. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To begin with, it will look like a long way, but it will pay off when grace begins to manifest its power in your lives. Let's not be mixed up. Let's stay in grace. It is the best place to stay in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because grace is a place of rest. I've come to a place in my journey and walk with God. I worry about nothing anymore. I'm at rest. Amen. Be at rest because grace is a place of rest. Because you don't, you don't have to perform before God responds to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you ever get confused about the message of grace, book an appointment with me. Book an appointment with me. And I'm sure the first one hour, you leave convinced that grace is the place to be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord.